Hello, my name is KMA. I am a big hearted, go lucky guy who wants to share how I make my life a happier place to be. If you ever have had negative thoughts, bad habits, and want to be happier, you should stick around because I will teach you something that may just help you out. Even if you think you have everything in order, I might just teach you a trick or two. This first episode has its purpose on introducing myself to you, a person who wants to improve every single day. If you improve daily, can you imagine how much better your life will be in a year? 10 years? And the goal of this podcast is to teach people to how to become happier with their lives, how to deal with difficult situations and um, radiate happiness onto others. If you ever go through life, if you smile at somebody, their automatic response is a smile. It just happens. They can't control it. So if you frown at somebody, that energy goes towards them too and makes them feel less happy. So go through your life smiling at people, helping people up to make people happier. And that is basically what this podcast is all about. Taking your emotions, negative emotions, positive emotions, and getting the best happiness out of them, finding the happiness in negative situations, and creating those happy situations for your life so you can go through life happier than you are right now. And this goal is not so much that we can turn a switch and we go from Mr. Depression or Mrs. Depression to Mr. Happiness. Um, It doesn't happen like that. It's a slow work. So I'm doing this slowly to... um, help you retrain the way you think and to give people a better idea of what happiness really is because it's really easy to get caught in vicious cycles and become negative nannies and um, it takes some effort to be aware of your thoughts to switch them over so you can become a happy person and then give other people happiness just by doing something as simple as smiling. These are the basic actions I make to make my life better for me, and it may work for you. Action 1. Life is good, being alive is a gift, and we better not waste it. Enjoy it, find pleasure in it, and don't get caught in a rut or a vicious cycle. So many times in my life I um, get caught up with how life is. You go to work, you go to school, you come home, you do uh, the work that you need to do at home, you work out a relationship, you do all these things and you kind of get caught up in a routine. And this routine is as like uh, what John Lennon had said a long time ago is life happens when you're making plans. (laughs) Same thing. These routines, yes, they are needed in our lives to be productive about life in general, but the way we enjoy them is all up to you. So if you're going through your daily routine, oh, I'm in traffic, oh my God, there's a lot of traffic today. Believe me, I know traffic. I grew up in the Boston area, 12 miles from Boston. It would take me an hour to get into town. My attitude during that time, you know, people could cut me off, flip me the finger, and it would be just like, yeah, whatever, you're, we're going to the same place. Come on, let's just go. It's not so much that life sucks doing the routine, monotonous things that you do. It's how to make those parts of your life more interesting, how to keep your mind interested, learning things. I mean, you can put on podcasts and get really into podcasts while you're driving to work. If you're at a workplace that is uh, toxic, I work in a very toxic workplace. I put in headphones or I just do not listen to the other people in the workplace because to me if I get caught up in the drama that is at work I am no better than the drama that is happening and I don't want to be caught up in drama and drama is just a waste of time of making people feel important I guess I don't know a good way to explain drama but it's not something that introduce into your life it's hard not to sometimes because drama just shows up and and it happens and you get caught up into it sometimes you don't even realize it then when you take a step back and take a look at the whole big picture it's like how did i get myself stuck in that life can be very very tough it can be very very hard but remember deep down in yourself life is good life is a gift and you better not waste it because 
I know, growing up, I am almost 50. Yes, I said the word 50. And time goes by faster. A week for me now goes faster than a day happened when I was a teenager. So make sure you enjoy it because the older you get, the faster it will slip through your fingers and it will be like, oh my God, I need to enjoy myself. Action one is just remember that life is good, that life is a gift and do not waste it. Find pleasure in it and don't get caught in a rut or a vicious cycle. If you can do that, <laughs> you are doing fantabuloso. Yes, I do make up words for these things. Action two, find out your bad habits. You know the ones. The ones you don't even know you have. Listen to what you are saying when talking and see how much of it is projection. The things you tend to dislike about other people are the things you actually dislike about yourself. This was a tough one um, for me. I, I really, 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 really did not like people who were sarcastic. Uh, it really would grate my skin. It would get underneath my fingernails. I, the hairs on the back of my neck would stand on end. And I'm like, oh my god, sarcasm is unbearable. Why do people be so sarcastic? Only to find out that I, one of the most sarcastic people in the world. I really didn't realize that until I used to go out camping with a friend of mine and we both had 12 string acoustic guitars and we would go camping not for the camping part of si things but to just to get out in the middle of nowhere so we could write songs together, play acoustic guitars together. So what we would do, we would, you know, do our thing, get out to the camping area and uh, go to, out to write a song. So we would have a tape recorder recording everything we did. And we would, at the end of the day, we would go back and listen to the better parts of the recording. And I'd be like, do I really act that way? Am I really that much of a jerk? I can't believe the sarcasm that's coming for me. And it was like the light dawned on Broadway. Oh my God, I cannot stand sarcastic people. Then why am I one of the most sarcastic people there are in the world? It was just like eye-opening that something so obvious to other people about my behavior was hidden from me. And I didn't even realize it. I shouldn't say hidden from me. I didn't recognize it. So I've come to realize that if somebody comes along and for some strange reason I get really angry with them for what seems like no reason at all, I look at the behavior that angered me and I'm like, is that something that I do in my life? Is that something that I do? And I'm just um, almost like projecting that anger onto somebody else because I'm upset seeing that behavior because I do that behavior myself. That's what I try and do. I find out what my bad habits are. Sometimes they're really hard to find. Sometimes they're really easy to find, like eating ice cream every night or something like that. The bad habits have to be emotional or all in the mind. It can be physical bad habits like eating badly, not exercising, and things like that. Just find your bad habits, even the ones that are hard to find. Listen to what you are saying to other people and really think about it. Are you projecting? Are you being negative nanny? Or are you being positive about stuff? And remember that the things that you dislike about other people are usually the things you dislike about yourself that you have no clue that you actually have that situation action three become aware of your thoughts if you get a bad thought replace it with something that makes you happy think of something happy right now visualize it become one with it like if you like going to the beach or if you like being on a pond feeding ducks if you like laying in bed listening to music if you like sitting in front of the TV watching the latest Netflix series if you really enjoy doing something it could be art if it could be driving it could be just sitting listening to music really loud it could be dancing while listening to that music really loud 
Find what makes you happy. Make it a picture in your head. Um, it could be laying in the sun on the beach in Southwest Florida. Find what makes you happy and visualize it. Become one with it. Love that image, love the happiness that it comes from, and love the love that it creates in your heart to be that happy. I know I have a lot of negative thoughts, but I do not hold on to them. I let them go and think of something positive. The hard part is recognize the negative thought pattern. Sometimes we go through life and we're just like cranky. We gotta do this and I gotta do that. I can't believe I have no free time and just don't well. And it's, you don't realize you're doing it sometimes. So I want you to become aware of the fact that you do that sometimes, that you become upset with the day and the day is grating on you and you feel like crap and you just want to yell at everybody. And, and ultimately, become aware of that. Become aware of the negative thoughts. And when you start having these negative thoughts, uh, especially if it's a vicious cycle one that you just... It's almost like you're dwelling on it. I know like if you're in a relationship and it's not going well and they said something bad or something, you're like all day long you're thinking, oh my God, whether or not you're thinking, oh my God, I messed that up really bad. Oh my God, I messed that up really bad. Oh my God, I messed that up really bad. Oh my God, I messed that up really bad. If you're, if you're one of those that goes like that, become aware that you are viciously going over a cycle and that you need to stop it right away so you need to become aware of your thoughts if you had a have a bad thought replace it with something that makes you happy so i visualize the bad thoughts that go on in my head and then i put a big red x into it i actually close my eyes have that bad thought or a bad feeling put a big red x through it and replace it with something i love and to me, it switches from time to time. It depends on what I'm getting into. A lot of times it's music. I start singing or I start singing in my head. If I'm at a place I can't think, sing. And um, I try and forget about the bad thoughts. Um, it's really hard to do. And it's this is all really basic stuff right here that I'm trying to teach to get you at least thinking about the way you think about life in general and the way your thoughts are produced and what happens when you create these thoughts. When you have the bad thought, visualize the bad thought, exit out and replace it with your happy thought. Whatever that happy thought is, you gotta replace it. I don't know. I felt comfortable being depressed. I thought there is beauty in depression. Uh, and one thing I, I know, I, I when I was having a really hard time, Enya, that Celtic singer from, I imagine, Ireland, I could be wrong, has some very beautiful new age type music. And I remember just listening to one of her tapes driving and I wasn't even... I wasn't even really that sad, but the music made me cry because it was so beautiful. That right there made me think that I felt comfortable in depression because I, I was listening to Enya because I was depressed and the music is kind of minor and it was just beautiful. And for some reason in my head, I feel comfortable when I am depressed. I, I feel beautiful when I'm depressed. Not like physically beautiful, but I just, there's a certain beauty about sadness sometimes. And you gotta catch on to those m mirrored thoughts there and eliminate those because yeah it's good to feel sadness every once in a while because it keeps things in check but you don't want to love it so much that you wrap it around your body and hug it and feel its warmth you do not want to feel sadness as warmth and for a long time my vicious cycle was i felt comfortable only when i was sad and feeling sorry for myself so that's kind of what i'm saying here become aware of your thoughts if you get a bad thought replace it with something that makes you happy think of something happy right now i personally most of my immediate reactions to things that happen in life around me is negative that's just the type of person I am. I'm kind of interested to know if that's how everybody around me is or if it's just because I just tend to come from a negative, depressed family that was filled with toxicity and drama and that was what became comfortable for me is negativity because that's all I had and that was my life and 
This negativity and sadness is what I wrapped myself up in and I loved it and I felt comfortable in it. And I still have a hard time feeling comfortable about being positive about stuff. It doesn't, I almost blame myself when I'm feeling positive because being negative and wrapping myself in that negativity is how I lived a lot of my life and that is what is comfortable for me. So become aware of those thoughts and stop them even if they are basically thoughts that just come into your head and you don't even realize it. That's why you need to become aware of your thoughts. It's really, really hard to do all the time because life happens, you're at work and you're doing something, your boss yells at you or somebody else does something stupid and then the, the revolving cycle of negativity starts happening and you gotta stop it and replace it with something that makes you happy. Those are the three main things that I do to keep myself in check, to try and keep myself positive, because having a positive life is so much better than having a negative one. And I would imagine that you, yourself, want to be a happy person. And sometimes we are our worst enemies, and it's hard to become a happy unless you actually actively work at it or at least for me it was hard so like i say i don't live in your how in your body i i would really love to see how other people think their inner voice and like get a couple of minutes of somebody else's inner voice so i can go oh okay so i'm not the only one that this happens to oh okay I'm not the only one who becomes sad. Oh, okay, I'm not the only one that re reacts to certain situations like that. Everything that happens to me, my initial response is negativity. That's just how I was brought up. And I, that is something I work on on almost a minute basis in my life, is to stop that negative thinking, dude, and just be happy. The key message in what I'm stating here is even when things get tough, they become hard. We feel alone, but remember, we are never alone. There are people here that love you, and you love them back, and that means more to you than anything else in the world. When we start feeling bad, or when I start feeling bad, and I'm guessing you may too, um, you want to become alone and isolate yourself and just crawl into bed. But remember, all those other people around you, your brothers and sisters, your mothers and daddies, your friends and uncles, and they all have a tough time with life. They are there, if you ask, for the most part, to help you out. There are places online, groups, and even I belong to one, called the MH Health Angels, Mental Health Health Angels, a mental health advocate for them. They're an online group that you can DM, direct message on Twitter, one of their members and say, hey, I need help. I don't have anybody in my life I can trust and talk to, and they will help you out. They'll set up a session and they'll talk to you. They're, they may not be professional, but they will bring you to where you need to be. They will give you the support. They will give you the love. They will make you feel non alone. They will help you out. So remember, when all out feels and you and you feel alone, you feel helpless, you feel like life is no longer worth living, you are not alone. There are people here. There are people online. There should be people in your life that you can go and go, hey, dude, you know, I'm really, really struggling with this. Do you mind sitting down and helping me out? And there are people that you can go professionally to talk to to go through the whole thing. I actually think having a counselor or somebody you can talk to, a psychologist or something, will help you out in multiple ways, even if you don't think you really need one, because it will at least help you bring out your emotions, your thought patterns, your the way you think out onto the table. It will make you go from just experiencing the things to actually experiencing and analyzing the way you react, the way you behave, the way you think and go, well, you know what, I need to change that, and I need to change that. And sometimes just go on to talk to somebody is the best way to bring out the things that you need to work on 
inside your inner monologue. So remember, even when things get tough and they become hard, we feel alone, but we are not alone. There are people that love you and that love is like a golden parachute to catch you when you're falling into the trap of depression and other mental illnesses that are hard to deal with. Remember, when I get angry, when I get mad, I want to run away from people. I'm a runner. I run fast. So if my life ain't going the way I go, I move. I move someplace else. But you know what? When I get there, I'm still there. I. It's me. It's me. It's not the people around me. It's me. So don't run. Deal with the situations and learn how to become better at dealing with difficult emotions and depressions. And this, these are all things I'm going through in this podcast to tell you what I'm going to be working on in the future and future podcasts. This is all stuff that I'm going to be touching base on, but this is just a broad overview. Why remember? I know when life kicks me hard, the first thing I want to do is be alone, which is the worst thing to do. You may initially need time to be alone to come with grips with things, but you need to find that support from families and friends. Support groups online do an amazing job also. This goes back to a little bit of what I was saying earlier. Like yesterday, uh, for me, was my dad's birthday, but he passed away a year and a half ago. It's still fresh in my mind. It's still hard for me to deal with, but I am not alone. I know that. If I'm religious, I may believe that he's in this room with me right now. Depends on you. I'm not so much religious and believe in, I mean, I believe that the stories in the Bible are great stories to go by, but I don't actually believe that they happened. You can hate me for that, that's up to you. But I do believe it's a great way to learn the basics on how to treat other people. Come on. You can't be treat others as you want to be treated yourself. That right there is the basis to how my I run my life. Is I want to treat you guys how I want to be treated myself. So I'm not going to treat you badly because I don't want to be treated badly. I want to treat you with love because I want to receive love. And that's how it is. That's why you should remember if life kicks you, the first thing you might want to do is become alone, which is the worst thing you do. You need to find that support group. Like if something really bad happens though, sometimes you do need to get by yourself and go over the situation and come to grips with it. And ultimately, Eventually, you will need to talk to somebody uh, to help yourself through it. You may need to uh, experience the feelings of how to learn how to get over a specific thing. With my dad, luckily, um, even though it was his birthday yesterday, when he passed away, it was almost a relief because he was in a lot of pain. Honestly, he was not a good person. Um, I learned a lot of my bad traits by behaving like my dad because you know when you're kids you behave like your parents and if you're a parent you gotta be behaving properly 100% of the time because the kid is gonna learn your bad habits you drive and text well guess what your kids gonna drive and text you you do stupid things all day long guess what your kids gonna watch and go well this is how you do things it must be the right way, even when it's not. So um, be a good example for your kids. Who we'll remember? <laughs> These are little notes I'm writing to myself to kind of lead me on to the next se section. Who re <laughs> And the next one, I went from key message, why remember, who remember, how to remember. Those are the next things we're doing. So we're on who remember. You should remember how to truly become better with how you live your life. It is great to not even be affected by negative people. And if you need to be around them, their words just roll off your back because you don't need that in your life. You actually feel sorry for these people because you know they need help or they wouldn't be acting this way. If you go outside, you have run into people that are just miserable. 
They may not be miserable all the time, but you just happen to run into them while they were having a miserable moment. That is actually a, a big statement I need to explain a little bit more. When you look at a baby and the baby starts crying or something, you go, you think to yourself, oh, well, the baby must have gas or the baby is hungry or the baby is this or that and will get past the crying. But when you grow up and somebody acts like a jerk to you, you go, oh, what a jerk. Why are you acting like that? But in all actuality, we should actually use the baby terms. Well, maybe this person had a bad day. Maybe they got into a car accident on the way to work and they're just really frustrated and they're not really a jerk. They're just really mad and pissed off and you just happen to walk into their life at the wrong moment. Doesn't mean that they're a bad person. It just means that they are dealing with something right then and there. A lot of people forget that when when somebody looks gives you a negative look or even if somebody like a lot of times I deliver mail and I could be looking at somebody while I'm driving down to the next mailbox and wave at them because they're staring right at me and they'll turn away and look the other direction like they didn't see me. Oh my God, I can't wave at this guy. Well, maybe they didn't see me. I mean, I could get mad and go, what a jerk, you can't even return the wave? Maybe they didn't see the wave. Maybe they they have something going on in their mind and it's really hard for them to put a smile on their face and wave at somebody because maybe they're, I don't know, something bad happened, their nephew just passed away and they're out on a walk just trying to come to grips with it. You do not know what's going on in somebody else's life, so give them the benefit of the doubt. If they are being bad to you, give them a benefit of the doubt. And it turns out a lot of times they're just going through a bad situation, and it also turns out a lot of times they're just trolls and bad people. So do not let bad behavior of other people affect you because you don't know why they're behaving badly. It could be just because they are going through a situation that is really tough right now and you don't realize that. So why waste your energy getting upset with them if you don't know? You should remember how to truly become better with how you live your life. It is great not to be affected by negative people and if you need to be around them, their words just roll off your back. That's what you need to do, which is some people, they hear a negative and they hold on to it and they hug it like the blanket of depression. Yes, I love this negativity, but no, let the words roll off your back. The more successful you can be as a person directly corresponds to how thick your skin is. The thicker your skin is, the more you can put up with, is the more successful that you will become. That is what Gordon Ramsay says. He lived a tough uh, time growing up with some of the chefs. They gave him a really hard time. It grew his skin really thick, and he's become really successful because of it. My skin is thick because of things I did to myself, things my family did to myself, things that people around me has done to myself. And it is just a learning experiences. I could take the bad situations and go, oh my God, woe is me. Why does my life suck, suck so bad? Or I could take the situation and go, ooh, a learning experience. What can I learn from this situation that will make me a better person? That's how you attack it. You should remember how to truly become better with how you live your life. That is what I'm talking about. When somebody comes after you, attacks you, just think of it as a troll online. If you stream or if you make videos or you do podcasts, you're going to get negative comments. At first, when you're not used to the negative comments, they're like a dagger in your heart. But once you get used to negative comments and know what they are all about, it is somebody trying to get attention. Yes, sometimes you get a negative comment from a friend of yours and you should go, oh, this person I trust, so I will take this negative comment, figure out, ask them even, what, what is it, what did I do that you didn't like, and so how can I fix this so it can be a better f situation for you if you want to go that way, or you can go, well, this person doesn't know what they're talking about, and move on. Failing, get negative responses, happen way more often than success and getting what you want. So you have to not put so much 
emphasis on the negativity around you and focus on the positivity and what's going right because 95% of the things are going wrong around you and if you get stuck in the that negativity that wrongness it just it's like a snowball rolling down the hill it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and it's gonna be hard for you to stop so just let it slide off you go well this person is must be having a bad day this person's just being a troll and trying to get a rise out of you that's so sad i'm glad i'm not them where i enjoy trying to make other people upset so i can feel better instead feel bad for them because I, I i stream a lot and trolls happen and it's just like a troll comes in says something outrageous that's totally stupid hateful and all this and i just you know i ban them and i think to myself oh man it must suck to be them because you know i'm spending my saturday afternoon typing to somebody with that streaming negative things about certain types of people or whatever sexual references and it's just like you know there's so much more you could be focusing on your life focus on something good focus on school focus on your family and do something for you that will make you happy don't take happiness away from other people to make yourself happy that is just trollish <laughs> i guess you could say with all this overview that I've kind of given you in today's episode so far, how to remember what is being said here? Because I know in the past I've done a lot of self-help things all the way back to when I was like 10 or 11 years old in the early 80s with Bill Moyers and his stinking thinking. You know, be, be aware that your thoughts are stinking and you got to change your thinking. With Bill Moyers, you know, I was 10, 11 years old when I was starting this stuff. I went to college as a um, major in psychology to try and figure out my my head because I I have an interesting way of thinking and I have lots of stinking thinking to do and that's what I'm trying to do is to change that. Making the podcast not only helps me, it helps you guys and one of my goals in life is to help many people so the more people I can help the happier I will be I know in the past going through programs like this listening to Tony Robbins and stuff you listen to the thing and you go yay that was great wonderful and then the next day you're kind of like what happened where did that you know what did I learn you don't actually think about it at all you just kind of move on and the, the thoughts and the, the lessons learned kind of go away one way to remember is to subscribe to this podcast and I will have one out each week to help you out if all goes well my life is chaotic so I may miss a week here or there but if all goes well I will have one of these out weekly I live with lots of negativity and work is extremely toxic the work environment is extremely toxic and I have to remind myself all day long that it is not my problem don't get caught up with the drama just move on do my job come home and focus on things that are good so subscribe to the podcast each week it will tell you when a new one comes out work on the things I set up earlier the actions life is good being alive is a gift and we better not waste it enjoy it find pleasure in it and don't get caught up in a rut or a vicious cycle to find out your, your bad habits you know the ones the ones that you don't even know listen to what you were saying when talking to see how much of it is projection the things you tend to dislike about other people are the things you actually dislike about yourself and three and most importantly become aware of your thoughts if you get a bad habit or a bad thought replace it with something that makes you happy you're thinking about dead dogs and kitties replace it with the sunset at the beach or you being at a concert of somebody you enjoy <laughs> you know it's pretty simple just be aware of your habits and replace them with happiness so remember to subscribe to this podcast and it will be a weekly reminder on how um how i believe you should 
uh, treat your life and those around you. Like I say, I'm in a fairly toxic work environment that is really bad, but I deal with it. Sometimes it's really hard to deal with it, and sometimes it gets me down. Honestly, it gets me really down, and I don't feel like doing anything else because this toxicity just sucks the energy right out of me. This helps me out. It refreshes my memory and what I have to do with my life and how to become a better person. Uh, subscribing to this podcast will also remind you to become a better person because the more people that are out in the world around us that are trying to improve their lives on a daily basis, the better off we are going to be as a society on whole. What we think is what we are. Subscribe to this podcast and we'll It will help you remember that in the future for when you may need it the most. I want to thank you so much for listening. This has been a lot of fun to do, and I can't wait till next week to really dive into one of these subjects to give you some real ideas that I use to help myself with anxiety and self-doubt. So I want you to help me. My goal in life is to help others, and I want you to try and help yourselves out just a little by just becoming aware of your thoughts pay attention to your different thought patterns during different types of emotions you may come across if you really want to help me remember that happy thought you visualized earlier well replace any thought dwelling thoughts with this visualization really think about why you love this thing you are visualizing whether it is sunbathing on the beach or being out with your friends at a party something that makes you feel good. I have even just gone outside, closed my eyes, and looked towards the sun to feel its warmth. For some reason, that seems to ground me and get myself closer to being one. Forgetting about the past and not worrying about the future. Just being now one. What makes this our lives so difficult especially the way that it is structured right now with the world is that we are so busy doing life we're so worried about the future we are so worried about actions we've done in the past that we are missing out in what is happening right now right now is all that matters there is no past there is no future your life happens right now the symbolism I've, I've read before. Forget the past, forget the future. Right now is a present, and it is a present. It is a gift to you. So if you can figure out how to stop worrying about the past and stop worrying about the future, forgive yourself for your past actions, and don't worry about those bills, because if you are living in the now, your life becomes so much easier. People often wonder. They, I, There's a thing going around Twitter right now, your favorite streamers and why. And I made a few of the lists of people who stream, and I don't really stream that often. I was put on the list of people's favorite streamers and with an explanation of why. And the main reason that people tend to enjoy my streams is because they know I've gone through hell. I have literally both emotionally, visually, all the senses have gone through hell. I'm not going to get into it now, but I have lived seven years of molestations. I've been through two mass uh, shootings. I've been in the hospital and locked up under suicide watch. I've been in jail for being bad because I was trying to get attention. I have not had a great life because of not realizing these things I'm trying to teach you today. And learning these things over through my life, even when something horrible happens like Hurricane Irma displacing me for months and making this area totally basically unlivable, going through things like that, I know how to find the positives in them. I don't get sucked up into the energy of the negative. I can look for the positives in them. I can see the light. I can be the light, as anxiety would say awesome you gotta go see uh go check out anxiety she is amazing but be the light be the person be the person that everybody looks to to know where they have to go 
be the person that people look up to that is what we are trying to do here people who like my streams like it like my streams because even though i've gone through hell i have always happy i always have a smile on my face i'm always giving out love and that is something that i want all of you guys to do through your life no matter how hard it is or how easy parts of it go do not get caught up in these negative vicious cycles just give out love give out happiness make people smile help other people out don't worry about the past don't feel guilty about the past and don't worry about the future become one right now that is your true self the reason why i ask you to help me and then ask for you to become aware of your thoughts is that the more people who recognize their thought patterns there are the better this planet will be the happier people are around me the happier i will be because that is my goal in life to create happiness help me out by trying to exercise and becoming aware of your thoughts that's all i ask is just this week before the next podcast just become aware of your thoughts and think of what type of thoughts where these thoughts came from how you can change them and just become aware of them also help me out by letting other people know about this podcast share it on social media if you happen to be using itunes please please leave a good review and if you have any questions of me please ask away i'll try my best to help you out even if that means pointing you towards somebody that will help you out so spread the word i this is all about creating happiness loving the world loving other people not letting negative thoughts suck you in and spit you out like a bitter twisted soul you may become we do not want that we want everyone to be happy and that is the goal here is to create happiness and if i can create happiness inside of you i have done my job because that creates happiness inside of me yes even though it sounds like i am um trying to create happiness for all of you guys helping you all out ultimately this is to help me out so yes it's selfish on my side because the more happy people around me the happier i will be so this is where you can catch me you can catch me on twitch twitter youtube the podcast survivor culture instagram facebook discord wordpress and soundcloud all under kma's corner k-m-a-s-k-o-r-n-e-r kma are my initials and it also stands for kiss my ass which is why i initially chose the program because we chose the name because initially i was going to do political commentary on how bad political actions really hurt the country and if you are a politician that is taking money away from the middle class and giving it to millionaires or whatever you can kma kiss my ass but thank you guys so much for listening to the very first podcast of be better let me know what you think uh dm me because um this is going to be a pretty big part of my content creation and i want to know that i'm doing the right steps to do this properly this is the first time i have ever recorded a podcast i've been afraid to do this for about three months because i'm a scaredy cat at heart so i'm putting this out there and i want to know your reactions let me know if this has helped you if this has made uh things better for you made you see things that you weren't able to see so easily before um i or if it didn't work at all if if this was negative if i did things weird in this let me know because i want these to be better and i continue this for the year to see how it goes so if you liked it if you thought things might help you out in the future um spread the word about this and if not let me know and i will see what i can do to make things better and again this was more of an introductory podcast that i'm just 
basically taking a big brush and just giving you an idea of what we're going to be delving into in the future. Also, if you have ideas and topics that you want me to cover, please send them to me. Best place to reach me is just uh, send me a tweet on Twitter or direct message me on Twitter. Guys, it's Twitter KMA's Corner, just so you know. Thank you for listening to this. I really, really appreciate it. If you are listening to my voice right now, you are freaking awesome. And I can't believe that you're here. I give you massive uh, hugs that aren't real, but are which I wish they would be real. And um, I, I appreciate you listening. Thank you all so much.